I am Jim Collison and live from the Gallup Studios here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup's Theme Thursday, Season 4, recorded on March 22nd, 2018. Theme Thursday is a Gallup webcast series that dives deep into the Clifton Strengths themes, one theme at a time, and today's theme is Achiever. If you have questions, comments, or contributions during this webcast, we have a live chat room that's available for you right below the main video. I know by now, hopefully, you know how to log into it. Bottom left-hand corner, it says login. Check that. Choose the guest account. Put your name in where it says guest. Take those numbers out. Hit submit, and you're in. We'll take your live questions. Particularly important because we're going to have a live Q&A after this program, only available for those that come out and listen to us live. So if you haven't done that, if you never come out and join us live, you're going to miss maybe a little bit of Q&A this year, and this will maybe hopefully incent you to come out and join us live. You can always catch up on everything we do live on our Eventbrite page, gallop.eventbrite.com. If you're listening to the recorded version or have questions about custom strengths coaching solutions, you can send us an email, coaching at gallop.com. And don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center, just gallopstrengthcenter.com. For all your Clifton Strengths coaching resources and training needs, you can actually catch the video and now downloadable audio. We call that podcasting, available for you on all the platforms. Everything and all the instructions on how to get it are on our resources page at the coaches blog, coaching.gallop.com. One more thing, rate and review this podcast. If you're listening on the Apple Podcast app, we'd love to have a rate and review. It just kind of helps us out a little bit. You can also uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. So there's a little subscribe button down below. You can subscribe to the live or the Gallup Strength Center and hit the little bell. It will notify you whenever we go live or whenever we produce a recording. It's available for you out there. Many of you have asked, how do we do that? You can also like us on Spreaker, do all that stuff and it helps. Thanks for doing that. Micah Librant is our host today. She works as a workplace consultant here at Gap. And Micah, always great to see you. We're excited about Achiever. Welcome back to Theme Thursday. Hey, Jim. Great to be here. What uh, so as we dig in for season four, give a just give a brief overview of what we're doing, and then let's jump in. Sure. So um, we have had the the pleasure of going through three full seasons of talking about every single theme, and really what we've done are overarching across every single season. I think the goal has been to help folks fall in love with all thirty four themes, and this season we're we're once again back to our alphabetical idea, uh, going through every theme starting with achiever alphabetically, and what we hope to help you do is really apply that theme. So think about the um, the focus of of season four is success, and when we think behind the scenes, gosh, where did where did Clifton Strengths come from? It it was not just a compilation of the 34 different ways that you can behave. It was not uh, trying to describe personality types. It really was research based, wanting to say what are the ways that successful people behave. How do we study people who perform at higher levels than others? How do we study businesses and and business leaders and individual talents that lead people to greater success? And so taking that into consideration, I think we want to shift the and make sure that we're really putting an emphasis and a spotlight on what does each theme look like in terms of how it can succeed. And what we know uh, is if you focus on areas where you have a great amount of talent, that that those areas um, are where your greatest potential to succeed lies. Sometimes that's hard to do. Sometimes it's it's real easy to say, it's let's, let's just put it this way, it's easier to identify things that you're not good at and ways that you can improve a little bit than it is to really understand places where you are uniquely talented and imagine what excellence can look like. And that's what strengths coaches are committed to doing is helping your clients, your loved ones, your the people in your life focus on where they're already good and stretch their expectation to near perfect performance, which is the definition of a strength, near perfect performance in a given activity. Um, as, as we're talking to strengths coaches and part of the recertification course that I that I taught a couple weeks ago is um, a couple weeks ago. I taught it longer than a couple weeks ago. I was on maternity leave a couple weeks ago. Recently, um, I, I taught our recertification course and what we help people focus on is a reminder that there is infinitely more to learn in areas of strength. Um, the, and I think that that is a, an assertion and an assumption that we need to be reminded of sometimes that even when you already do something with ease and enjoyment and excellence, that that's the place you need to be more curious about. That's the place you need to add some more skill, some more knowledge, some more awareness to, because that's really how you can be world-class. So season four, 
We'll go through all 34 themes in a shorter amount of time. As, as Jim mentioned, we're going to do about 30, 35 minutes on each theme. And we're going to take a, a little bit of what Al Winsman has put together from Mastery Monday. So how do we really understand the theme itself? Uh, how does it help you? How does it hinder you? What is some of the self-awareness, um, self-expression, and self-regulation around that theme? And then we'll also say, okay, how do you invest in this theme? Um, and I think as uh, I, I've, I've fallen in love with podcasting as a consumer, um, and I, I really love the idea of having somebody literally in my ear reminding me of action I can take um, on, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, giving me some ideas, some different ways to think about these themes. So I think the part that I'm most excited about with season four is this idea of a challenge every week. Um, today with Achiever, you'll notice kind of the last thing we talk about, I've got three specific actions you could take if you're somebody with high achiever within the next week to invest in that theme. Um, and I think it'll give folks a better understanding of the depth of every theme and hopefully open up our mind to the infinite potential that there is within each theme, not just to know, gosh, how could this hinder me, but to know, wow, what are, what are all the ways that I could make the most of this theme? Micah, as a programming note, uh, on the coach's blog, coaching.gallup.com, we are separating Al's work. So we have now a 2017 series for Mastery Monday and a 2018. So you can tell the tell the two apart um, since we're in our second year. And so we're going to be following the 2018 series. So you can go to the coach's blog. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll be separating all those out. So you can find that in the topic section. If you want to go back to Achiever, Get that blog, print it, download it, make a PDF out of it, whatever. That's what we're going to be following. Micah, let's not waste any more time. Let's dig in. Let's give a, a brief overview of Achiever. Sure. I watched um, all of our previous podcasts on Achiever, and I have started out Achiever the same way for three years. So we're going to change it up a little bit. Um, first thing I want to talk about is what does Achiever look like when it is in its best form? So um, a, it, to, to just briefly remind us of this theme, it's an attainer, a doer, you're a finisher, a, a pusher, an energizer, a tracker, somebody who's aware of, of where we are in, in pursuit of a goal, perhaps a pace setter. And as I've started every theme Thursday about Achiever, I'm going to say this word again, it's about stamina to complete. It's about um, understanding that uh, you really count down. <laughs> you, you say, okay, I've finished this. I've finished that. I've finished this. If an achiever is going to run five miles, at the end of every single mile, there's a little mini celebration. And think about that as the spark that keeps you going to the next mile. Um, the aspirational side of achiever, think about it this way. When you are at your very best as an achiever, um, it looks like pushing yourself and others toward milestones, pushing people toward finish lines. Uh, Jim does not have achiever in his top five, but I ran a half marathon with Jim one day and he was as much about helping me get over some of these hurdles and think about, let's get that next mile. Let's get that next hill. Uh, and I think achiever can, can do that a little bit. You know, you think about perhaps the mature side, the others focused side, it's pushing people toward that, that little bit of accomplishment and completion. It's also about ex exuding and inspiring more energy than other people. We've talked in the past about um, Achiever and how folks with Achiever just don't seem to need that off button, that they are a little bit like this constantly on, constantly going, constantly pushing toward um, the finish line. And perhaps they really do need less sleep than others, but you are going to um, demonstrate that higher level of, of stamina to, to work uh, and, and to complete things. But I think in its best state. It's also about inspiring other people to work a little bit harder. Um, it, it's an awareness of what needs to be done and what it takes to get there. So uh, understanding what yet is undone, not being frustrated by that, but being able to translate that into, um, into an understanding of, hey, here's what's, uh, what, what has yet to, uh, to happen in order to get to this task list or this list of things I, I need to do. And here's how we can do it. I think it's also crushing your own to-do list in a way that advances your accomplishments. So uh, the aspirational side of Achiever is not just I'm going to do everything because I can, but that I'm going to be thoughtful. I'm going to have a little bit of, of strategy behind what it is I'm doing because I'm not going to do anything halfway. Mike, I think the poster child that we always go to is the to-do list for Achiever. So it always shows up. Are there others when, because certainly not every Achiever has to crush their to-do list, but are there other, if you were thinking about poster child items, what else would you add in there? Or what's another item you could put in? 
Oh, that's a great question. The to-do list is there because it, because it's true. Um, and so I don't want to have people sort of erase that from their memory. Um, I think that achiever is this great awareness piece, uh, maybe a ticker in the, in the back of your mind. Um, if it's not a to-do list, it could also be, I think about something maybe that grows or, or, or tracks progress. So a tunnel, your, your progress through a tunnel maybe, or, yeah. or a lap counter, there's that element of, of counting and qualifying and being able to move toward a goal. That's always going to be true about achiever. I'll think about that. I'll get a better yeah. metaphor in my head. Craig says in the chat room, he says, I wake up every day to accomplish the list of tasks in my head. And so sometimes we visualize that as written out and maybe that's just an, an intrinsic kind of concept, whether we write it down or not. And then he says a word stamina. And I think you kind of get to that in the description, which is this, get things done via stamina. I just, I do them. I stay yeah. late. I work harder than most. Some of those kinds of things to be able to check off, tick, whatever that is to be able to get that done. You've got some actions though, some prescribed actions. Let's talk a little bit about those. Totally. So uh, coming back to this idea of, gosh, could it be more than a list? Um, I, I'm a junkie for my Apple watch and it has uh, three rings, three activity rings that you're supposed to be able to close every day. One of them's your total movement. One of them's how many hours you stood and the other one's how many minutes you worked out. And I think about that um, as being uh, it, it, the cool thing about it that has a lot to do with achievers. It starts at zero every midnight, it starts over. And so the thing that achievers, I think, have um, in common with some other executing themes is that desire to push forward, but that stands alone to achiever is that it is um, something that restarts daily. Now you might have a task, a task list of something that's really big, let's say it's gonna take you a semester to accomplish, but your, your achiever focus is going to be able to say, okay, today I need to do this. It's, it's how do you eat an elephant, you know, one bite at a time. <laughs> I'm gonna get probably going to get hate mail for that. Don't eat elephants. Elephants but... <laughs> don't taste very good. That's just, just don't do it. It's progress toward goals. Uh, and I think that that's a great way to say it. Or perhaps it's got a, maybe a little battery sensor with it too. And, and Achiever's battery is just going to be a little fuller as long as there's that, that the closer you get toward getting something done, the battery of an Achiever actually fills itself instead of, instead of draining. Yeah. So let's talk more. To, so to do more, what, yeah. what should people be doing when we think about Achiever? Yeah, um, this season we really want to talk about, gosh, if I have this theme, what should I be raising my hand to do? How should I make the most of this? So if you're an achiever, do more working hard. <laughs> what you do really well is working hard. So lean into that. You might be uh, tempted to stop or slow down for other people who can't keep up with you. And of course, you want to temper it so that you're not bulldozing over folks. But find ways that you really can just open the gates and run. Find places where perhaps that takes a little bit of autonomy or projects where you can work as hard as you possibly can. If you're on a project and and you, you hit that sense of flow because you're hitting all these milestones and you're progressing toward that goal and you're feeling it, keep going. Um, if it, that That's an achiever talent that not everybody has. Um, so do more working hard. Also think about finding partners who share your stamina. Um, find ways to work with people who like to work in the way that you like to work um, and, and figure out ways to partner with them more often. We can always talk about complementary partnerships, about how you can work with people who don't have that same sense of energy. But I'm drawn back to uh, a coaching experience that I had where um, an entire team, there was four folks on this team, and all four of them had Achiever as a dominant theme. And they outshined their other departments, their other teams who are working on the same goals all the time. And it was because there was this multiplicative effect of work ethic. Um, and they were able to say, you know what, we're all energized if you give us another task and we're going to do it together. Um, so figure out ways to, to raise your hand just to do more work. Micah, oh, I, I love to watch our project managers here at Gallup because especially in technology, we tend to hire folks that have that high achieving. It's a very common theme here at Gallup. And it's fun to see them in a conference room. They're all together and they're not talking and they are just heads down doing, right? And, mm -hmm. and I know I've sat in some of those meetings sometimes and I know things are getting done. So I really appreciate that idea of birds of a feather. And if you're an achiever, by gathering other achievers around you, and I think sometimes it amplifies your productivity. If you think you're productive alone, 
it chances are you may be more productive in a power of two situation or power of three where you're bringing others in. And so I really like that suggestion of a surrounding, do what you can to surround yourself with like-minded individuals to help increase your productivity. And it might not have to be folks who have achiever as the Clifton Strengths theme. It, it, I think it, what we're really getting at is pay attention to people who can keep up with you and people who press you to, to work even harder and run next to them. Yeah, no, it's great. What else? What should we ask for? What kind of things as an achiever, what can we be asking for? I think about this as what environment is going to best support that that achiever talent. Um, ask for more opportunities to dive into the work. Find ways that you can confirm when the work is ready to start um, rather than getting stuck in idea mode. I think a lot of times um, if I'm an achiever, I want to train my ear to listen for go. <laughs> I, I want to also find ways that I can clarify how close we are to that go factor. Um, there's a lot of projects, there's a lot of plans that need to be thought about before we can really, you know, meet meet the the pedal to the pavement. Um, even within that thought work or within a brainstorm, it can be your role to help people see potential milestones that we can tackle. Um, so I, I coached a, a principal of a, um, a high school once with high achiever, and she said, you know, I'm kind of frustrated because I feel like I'm the only one who's seeing the tasks that are coming up every time we discuss a problem. And I said, well, if you, you might actually be the only one seeing those. So help people see them. You know, when, when you hear an idea, if you're in a high achiever, you probably hear naturally the work that's going to go into executing that idea. So find a way that you can help other people hear what can be accomplished. And at the same time, find a way that you can you can find environments where you can do a little bit of that work. That doesn't mean that you're not going to be a leader. Um, it, that and Don't confuse this as, hey, you roll up your sleeves and be the doer. Um, I think it, what it means is find opportunities where you can see some progress and where you can be a part of creating progress toward that goal. Micah, how does accountability play into Achiever? Because it seems like that would those two should go together like peanut butter and jelly. I, was, I think achievers would make great accountability partners because they can have this dispassionate approach toward a checklist. And I mean, checklist in whatever way you want to describe it. Uh, but they've got this um, commitment to progress or commitment to completion that perhaps could be um, more compassionate than, than being able to say, gosh, I don't know how you feel or I don't know what's going on. But an achiever could say black or white this is done, this is left undone. Um, and also perhaps with a little bit of, of polish and coaching, achievers can also be your best celebrators because they understand when a milestone has been met. And so it can be a really great way to say, uh, look what we did, look, look at what we're moving toward, look very clearly at what it is that needs to be done. So Chris asked a good question out in the chat room. He says, how do, how do those high and achiever balance quality with completion? I think that's a great question. What do you think? I think it takes some coaching. I think achiever by itself is just a starting point and does not necessarily have to account for quality. Um, you either come at that by great coaching or by other complementary themes. Um, you can let's let's think about the difference perhaps between achiever and maximizer, where achiever is driven to complete, a maximizer is driven to narrow the the focus of what I'm completing to really only look at perfection, um, and so quality is not inherently part of achiever that I know of. Um, I do think that that's part of, in fact, that's one of the challenges that we're going to give folks with achiever this week. I think that's a way that you can think about honing in and really um, improving that achiever talent and bringing it into. To a strength is looking at where are you um, inserting that elbow grease? Where is your is your hardest uh, effort being being planted? Um, because and that might be something that you even want to bring in other people's perspective on. Track what you're doing and then decide whether that aligns to perhaps some of the bigger goals that you want or or, or even to the legacy that you want to lead. Um, I think that the achiever will always have that awareness of where are we going? What's, uh, what can we complete today? Um, and perhaps that that also means it makes you a really great partner if you can increase your opportunity to be held accountable for the doing. Um, think about specific increases in well-defined tasks. If today I spoke with five people about Clifton Strengths and I was an achiever, my goal should probably be tomorrow I want to speak with with 
13 people. Um, and those, those increases, if you can, I think you can expect them to be a little bit higher for achievers. So we want to make sure that we're aiming and we're trying to stretch some of those, those countable measurable tasks that an achiever is going to complete. We want to make sure that that's in the place where it really should be the place where you're going to get your best return on your investment or in the place that aligns the, the best with, with really what you want to accomplish. You know, I love what Craig says in the chat room is kind of a follow up to it, which is, you know, the maximize, uh, maximizer may not be there for him. So number two, responsibility, number five, belief, he kind of leans on those mm -hmm. themes, right? Both of those can have a little bit of that sorting that maximizer has in order to get that quality. I love that combo and the idea of, hey, I may not have this. I need to have it for certain tasks. Yeah. How am I going to lean on some other themes that might help me there? And I love that that he brings up theme dynamics there, Craig, with with belief as well. I think Al just posted belief on Mastery Monday for 2018. It'd be really great for you to go back and read that alongside the achiever piece because you have them both. I think it might help you understand how your belief colors colors your achiever. It's going to have a lot more values infused into it and probably naturally help you decide what to what to work really hard on. Yeah, Micah, what can I worry less about as we think about Achiever? Because that can be a driver, right? And I think for some people that can cause anxiety or cause worry. What can we worry less about? Aren't you excited about this section, Jim? I am, I really <laughs> Spoiler alert, we're going to answer that question for every theme. What should you just let go? Um, if you're an achiever, don't try to commit giving your all to everything. You're going to be asked to do a lot because you get it done. Um, make sure that you're putting your time toward your highest priorities, not just everything that needs to be finished for the sake of completion. Um, think about understanding the better people get to know you, the more they're going to rely upon you even to execute on their projects. Uh, you're going to have to be your own best friend or or get some complimentary partners who can help you really hone in on, like, like we talked about, Craig, that quality issue. Um, make sure that you are... Uh, known for your your hard work but that it's it's put into a thoughtful place so worry less about executing a hundred percent on everything you do can you set a task to do that i mean it, it can you certainly use the theme in your favor to say hey look i'm gonna make some items to worry less about these things or to do some things differently that help me not commit to so many things talk a little bit about that how can we use that in our favor I think uh, I like to think with all 34 themes, how would I use this in a coaching intervention? Um, and, and with achiever, what you want to lean into is that, um, that very clear awareness of how to tackle tasks. So let's say the coaching problem you have is that you've overcommitted. Uh, you've, you've come you, and anytime you're going to, you're going to say you're going to do something, you will put all of your hard work, all of your stamina to complete into that. But let's say you've just stretched yourself too thin. Um, if you're going to lean into achiever, unstretching yourself or saying no to something is going to need to be a task that you tackle. It's going to need to be something with a, a, a clarity and a transparency around what great looks like. And it's going to need to be something that you can understand whether or not it's finished. Um, so with achiever, I think the way to leverage achiever in any sort of a coaching intervention or a theme intervention is to make sure that what you're looking for um, is is clear and obvious is something that could be written down on a on a to do list. Um, so you might have to take a little bit more work than other themes would at translating ambiguity into clarity, because once it's clear and once you know exactly what that bullet point is, you can run a hundred miles an hour toward that. Uh, you can probably think about that and then the next five things on your checklist. But if you're really going to lean into achiever in order to fix a problem or or accentuate something great, it is going to have to be something pretty clear. Let's talk about working with Achiever because I think we've got some really great points here. What can we expect? Hold on. Sammy's here. We got to say hello. <laughs> my Guys. Da my daughter Sammy is in the chat room. She promised she would come and join us. So Samantha, welcome. Thank you for being here, Sam. We talk about you a lot. Um, we're happy that you're here. S-A-M-M-I-E. <laughs> Jim, you asked me another question. You're yeah. going to have to ask it again because I was so excited that Sammy was here. That's fine. Working with Achiever, what can we expect? Yeah, if you've got somebody with an Achiever on your team, 
So now what we're moving out of is if you are an achiever and we're going to move into a little bit of the engagement side of things, if you've got someone with high achiever on your team or in your house, um, you can expect excitement and relaxation when tasks are in bullet form. Uh, people with, with high achiever take delight in clarity. That is not to say that they are simple thinkers. It's just that if, if I know exactly what I'm running toward, I can run that much harder. And that's what I love to do. Um, you can expect a desire for agreement on what needs to be done. Again, a little bit of that. Um, they do really well if you can move from ambiguity into, into some, some clarity. Uh, you can also expect your achievers to have more energy than other people. Um, you might also think about something I've, I've coined as isolated stamina. They don't need you to push them. And they may not always want to be the person who's driving and pushing the whole team. Uh, so they, there might be instances or specific projects or certain tasks where leave them alone and let them get the stuff done and it's going to be better for everybody. Uh, I think it's also worth noting uh, that you should also know that they're going to have a high expectation of the work ethic of of people around them uh, and perhaps a low threshold for boredom. I've seen in the chat, pe people with Achiever have even mentioned that when I've got downtime, I fill it. Um, my husband has Achiever number one and he actually really kind of bristled at the definition of Achiever as being constantly busy and, and really looking for things to do. But the man is never bored. <laughs> he, um, he does it in a different way than perhaps a learner would, where if a learner gets bored, they go learn something. Um, Achiever, I think, is already anticipating two or three things that they could be doing, that they could be completing. Um, so even if his, his task is to watch an entire season of a show on Netflix, um, it's still something that he's doing. It's still something that he's, that he's creating some progress toward. And do achievers like to be bored? Uh, that's probably something to ask in the chat room. I wonder if we can meet an achiever who's ever actually been bored. Um, I imagine an achiever, um, even on vacation, has has an awareness, even if they're not writing down a checklist. Let's not turn these these folks into cartoon characters. I think they have an awareness of what we can do during the day because the day is going to start over at zero. So how can we fill that with, you know, let's even even the idea of an achiever on vacation is today I'm going to have a drink with an umbrella in it, and then I'm going to take a walk, and then I'm going to sit and read a book and then I'm going to meditate to, to the outside observer that looks like a pretty chill day to an achiever. I think it looks like those are four different things that they just accomplished. Yeah. A section I'm really excited about this year is about around recognition. How do we recognize folks with Achiever? And this, by the way, we do reckon in our Q12 database, the world does recognition. Uh, it's, it's one of the worst ranking things that we do. So we can do a better job of it. How do we recognize achievers? let's make sure that we're celebrating what's been done. Achievers might not always look backwards, but you can. You can be that person who helps an achiever uh, see what they have accomplished. And again, an achiever is probably more excited about what's coming next. Uh, tomorrow's going to start at zero, but it can be really great to be a partner to an achiever by recognizing what they've accomplished. Um, also think about recognizing what they've said yes to. What have they taken on? Um, they're, they're probably going to show uh, quite a bit of excitement and anticipation about what's next, it's where they're looking. So if you can look there too, it's really meaningful recognition. Um, achievers, we've talked about having more energy than others. This could become such a common thing that it gets overlooked and maybe even underappreciated, but I think it's worth always writing down or saying or figuring out the best way to recognize um, individually when an achiever has gone above the expectations. Um, again, it can be, it can start to seem like what they always do, but it doesn't mean it needs to be any less recognized. Yeah. And I think an important reminder, just ask them like, that's what we sometimes don't, we, we miss that point. We're so busy trying to figure out, just ask them, how do you like to be recognized? And there's, and then write that down. And there's some great, great tips just from them on how to get that done. Likewise, Micah, how do we stretch? How do we develop achievers? Uh, they do so much. Sometimes it feels like maybe they're unteachable, but how do mm -hmm. we do that? I think about if I'm managing someone with high achiever, um, help, helping them put better metrics to, to what's getting done. That might mean writing goals around accomplishments, thinking about how do we really clarify what better looks like, um, and how do we 
stay on the same page in terms of understanding what's expected of you today. What is what is the expectation? What does better look like? Um, and then how do we write future goals based on what you've already done in the past? So we're helping proactively align um, where that work ethic is going, where that effort is going to what, what they want to accomplish in the future, rather than just that scattergun approach of I can do it all. So I'm going to um, really specifically keep track of their hours with them, um, help them see how exceptional that workload is, help them be thoughtful about what they're doing today and where it's getting them either in their career or their contribution to their community or, or their progress toward a specific project. And then another great question and that we're going to look at for the rest of this season is how can we partner with them better? And I think this is really powerful, right? The power of two. And we, when we, when we do that, we actually exponentially increase our productivity as opposed to just one plus one equal two, it can equal so much more. How do we partner with them? Well, this is a real personal one for me because I drew my motivation for the answer to this question based on a hard week I had last week. Um, I, um, my husband had to leave the house before I even got the two kids to daycare on day two of ever taking two children to daycare. And um, on top of that, we had a handyman coming that day and I had to have our whole kitchen cleaned and cleared and emptied. And I told him at the end of the day, I was like, I can't believe you left early. Um, it was really hard for me. And he's, his instant reaction was, Micah, we have a chalkboard in our kitchen why don't you write us a list of what needs to be done the night before? And he was sweet enough to say, and by us, I mean me. <laughs> and so I took a little bit of, of inspiration based on that partnership there. But uh, if you're going to partner with someone with high achiever, I think look to them for momentum on extended timelines. That checklist might be a daily thing, but the awareness that they have of what isn't yet complete, that's pervasive. That goes, that goes everywhere. So think about honoring them as being the person who can help you keep going when you don't think you can. Um, honor their need for, for clarity and, and a lack of ambiguity and check in on what's already there. Um, uh, versus uh, sometimes just thinking about, wow, I've got this great idea of what we need to do today. Can you do it? Make sure that you're you're understanding what, again, that pervasive understanding of completion toward a goal. Um, check in with them on, on what's already on that list. Talk openly about what is done, what is yet to be done. Um, have an open dialogue about timelines so that all parties are clear on how hard we're working. That can also come back to that opportunity to recognize um, when we're going above and beyond. Um, and also know that they're going to work hard. So keep up or find ways to get out of their way. I would also say, don't give an achiever a task without the authority to run toward the finish line with it, or at least a clear stopping point. Um, remember, you can you can set up an achiever sort of like a, a toy car that goes on its own, not when you have to pull backwards in order to go. But if you could press go and let it run, um, you can set up an achiever really well by making sure that there's some some barriers are outside of that path and we're just ready to move forward. Micah, we are bringing in kind of a new segment this this season as we talk about a challenge. And I'm, I'm really excited about these challenge questions that we have for folks. So let's dig in a little bit. We're going to each each one of these episodes, we're going to challenge you. Micah's got these ready to go. Micah, how are we going to challenge today? Yeah. And I would say that as we shape this, uh, thanks for your patience in molding this with us as a community. So if we find that it's best to to check in and uh, over, over any specific social media outlet that you like, or if you just want to write back to us and let us know how you're doing, I, I think it, this could be a really cool interactive piece. So I'm going to post my challenge on my Instagram feed. It's at Strengths Talk. Um, I'll also see if there's better places we can post this as well. So I'll, I'll post it on our Facebook group. I'm, I'm thinking about perhaps just writing it up as a quick uh, paragraph on our, our coach's blog, but let us know, give us some feedback for what would work best for you just to follow up on this challenge. Um, for people with high competition, maybe sometimes there will be things we can count to determine whether you're the best, but really when we say challenge, it's in the spirit of homework, except it, smel it smells better than homework. Um, so three things, choose one if you have high achiever and do it before next week. Uh, challenge number one, option number one, track your project hours at work for at least five days. Um, and at the end of five days, review how those hours are aligning with your top work priorities for you. So just do, do a, it's basically a food journal for what you're doing during the day. Don't do anything differently, but at the end of the day for five days, go back and count where your hours went. And at the end of five days, have a little review session. Um, how is that stacking up? How is my effort and my hours stacking up toward what it is I need to be accomplishing? Number two, 
find your favorite app for managing a to-do list and use it. (laughs) So that might mean going back to one that you've already downloaded that's in the dustier parts of your smartphone. It might mean um, doing something analog, like writing something down that you haven't done in a while and, and using it. Or it might mean eliciting some feedback from a community of what they love, trying a new one out and seeing what works for you. But again, what you're looking for is a great app to manage your list. Micah, and, before, yeah. before you go on to the, that challenge, the third one, on number two, this would be a perfect one for you to share achievers. Uh, and you can put theme Thursday slash achiever in our Facebook group. What are you using for those the, for those apps? Uh, we had a whole bunch of them listed in the chat room. Many of you are not able to listen to that live and take advantage of it. We'd love to come back and hear what you're using. And so this would be a great opportunity. Jump over to facebook.com slash groups slash called to coach. That's our webcasts community. And uh, and we'll try to, if somebody doesn't beat me to it, we will try to get a specific post for that challenge listed. And then you can tell us what you're using. Let's get the third challenge, Micah. The last one is about building relationships. Um, I'd like you to have a conversation with a partner. This could be personal or professional partner about what you're looking forward to checking off this week. Um, Letting somebody else in on what's on your list, on what's in on your mind and on your brain um, can be a great investment in that relationship. So the assignment is simple. Just share what you're most excited um, about checking off with somebody else, somebody who you partner with in your life. No, pretty awesome. Micah, we did it. We got through this in just a little over 30 minutes, which is really, really cool. We'll remind folks that we're going to stay around for some post-show content, um, which means kind of Q&A, talking through some of the things that are in the chat room, a little less structured. So if you come out and join us live, and if you want to know what's going on live in our entire community, gallup.eventbrite.com. We post everything there and make it available for you. So that's the way to kind of keep up with it. And so, but you only get it if you're going live. We're not going to, the post show is not going to be published anymore. You have to be come out to the live show. Many of you did. We had 30, almost 45 of you right now are listening live and we appreciate you. 45 people, Micah. That's great. That's fantastic. For, for an achiever, you can just check that off. Check maybe <laughs> highest of the season. Check any other final thoughts, Micah, before we go? Just the achievers, the best show we've done of season four. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> With that, dropping the mic, we'll remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com. Send us your questions or comments. If you'd like to be a guest blogger, maybe you're an achiever and you need to write something down that way, send us that blog, fully formed, four to 600 words, We'd like, kind of, and it, we'd love it to be original. Send it to us in an email, coaching at gallup.com, put guest blogger in the subject line, and that will get routed over to Micah, and we'll consider that for our blog. If you want to see all our blogs and resource information, it's available on our coach's blog. Remember, don't forget, coaching gallup.com about 90 percent of the questions i get in our facebook group could be answered at coaching.gallup.com so head out there and check that first if you're interested in becoming a gallup certified strengths coach we've talked about that as well before uh, uh, the site that leads to all our course certifications is available at courses.gallup.com or you can fill out the contact form right there on the live page i mentioned this earlier but don't forget to join us on our facebook page where all the activity goes on around the community you can get that at facebook.com slash groups slash called to coach. We want to thank everyone for joining us today. We'll look forward to the next call, the, not the next call, the coach, the next theme Thursday. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.